This is Optimal Health Daily, episode 335. The 10 Things Perpetually Healthy Nerds Do That Unhealthy People Don't, part five, by Steve Cam of nerdfitness.com, and I'm Dr. Neil. Welcome to another edition of Optimal Health Daily, where I narrate the best health and fitness blogs for you. Now, I usually answer your questions on Fridays, but this whole week has featured the longest post ever from Nerd Fitness, so I had to break it up into five parts. If you're new here, it'd be best to start from the beginning. That'd be episode 331. Now, don't worry, I'll be back answering your questions next week. So if you want to send in a question, which is basically like getting a consultation from me for free, it's really easy. Just come by oldpodcast.com and look for the bar along the side of the page that says, ask a health question. If you click on that, you can record a message straight from your computer's microphone or from a phone if you use the app. You can do multiple takes, which is great. Once you're happy with it, you can then submit it to us. Or if you like to do things the old-fashioned way, you can call 61-I-LOVE-O-H-D. So either that or visit oldpodcast.com, send in your question, which may be answered right here on the show, and you'll be in small, special raffles to win books from us. And now let's hear the last part of this post as we optimize your life. The 10 Things Perpetually Healthy Nerds Do That Unhealthy People Don't, Part 5, by Steve Cam of nerdfitness.com. PHNs introduce accountability, punishments, and rewards into their life to keep them on track and avoid their own personal kryptonite. They check in with someone every day to make sure they ate their vegetables, or their friend has been instructed to donate $50 to a terrible cause they hate if they miss a workout check-in. They might reward themselves with new running shoes, a reward that rewards them back with more momentum if they complete 20 runs in a single month. Or they don't go to certain bars or make sure they eat before going to a party because they know they'll make a bad decision once they get there. Or they might build their environment to not have tempting foods at home. It's tough to eat poorly when your cabinets are stocked with good food. Unhealthy people do motivation wrong and they let their kryptonite defeat them. PHNs know their kryptonite and build systems to deal with it. Know thyself, my dear friend, and know what your triggers are. We're all flawed. PHNs just plan for their flaws better. These triggers can be environmental or situational or emotional. Know it will happen and build a kryptonite-proof plan so you don't have to worry about avoiding it. Stop relying on motivation and willpower to tackle your kryptonite. Don't put yourself in bad situations. Build your bat cave, your environment, so it's tougher to make unhealthy decisions and easier to make healthy ones. Don't go out to dinner at unhealthy restaurants and schedule early workouts on Saturdays so you won't drink yourself silly on Friday. Yes, I realize Kryptonite is Superman and Batcave is Batman, but they're from the same universe. Deal with it. Number 10, they are surrounded by lactitis, not banana peels. You are the average of the five people you associate most with. Are those people like lactitis in your life or are they banana peels? Banana peels need no introduction. Drive over one in Mario Kart and they'll ruin a perfectly good race by crushing all of your momentum. Unhealthy people get spun out all the time by banana peels in their lives. What do you mean you don't want to eat my lasagna anymore? You love my cooking. Or everybody's coming over to play Dungeons and Dragons and eat pizza. You can't miss this. Or you don't need to lose weight. You look fine. Live a little. Come on. Questions and comments like these subtly influence our behavior every day. So think about the people in your life, the things they say, the activities they choose to spend their time on, the foods they eat, the restaurants they frequent, etc. These are the reasons why they look the way they do. And that stuff rubs on you, whether you realize it or not, which is how you end up looking like them. Compare that to surrounding yourself with Lakitus. If you're not familiar, Lakitu from Mario and Mario Kart is the little guy on the cloud that picks you up out of the water and puts you back on course. Like Lakitu, look for the people in your life who pick you up and put you back on track and hold you accountable. Use healthy, positive peer pressure to keep your momentum. Take exercise, for example. The banana peel. You want to exercise, but your friends are mad at you for skipping a Destiny 2 or World of Warcraft raid. You're going to skip the workout. Lucky to? You want to exercise, and your friends are at the gym counting on you for a team workout. You're going to get your ass to the gym. Food. The banana peel. You're out to dinner with friends and they order lasagna, chicken fingers, and fries, a large pizza, and enchiladas. You'll likely order junk food to fit in, rather than order a salad and endure their scorn. Lucky to. 
You are at a healthy restaurant and all four people order salads before you order. I'd bet $1,000 you're gonna order something healthy too. Mental health. Banana peel. You have five friends who never talk about anything seriously. How are you supposed to tell them about your depression medication or that you're thinking about going to see a therapist? Lucky two. You have five friends who are not only accepting of your flaws, but share theirs too and have advice for you. In multiplayer terms, do you want to be part of a group with five newbies that suck at Warcraft and get everybody killed on a raid? Or do you want to be part of a group of five rock stars that are four levels ahead of you that can show you new zones, keep you alive, and make you a better player? You want the second group, and you want that second group equivalent in life. So you need to be surrounded by people that pick you up, not slow you down. PHNs know this, and they make the hard decisions about who is worthy of their time and attention. They often fire their unhealthy friends and family, even if only temporarily, because they can't be around negative influences as they're trying to build momentum. I've heard tons of stories where unhealthy relationships have ended because a PHN was dating an unhealthy person who didn't want them to be healthy. In their quest to become a PHN, we know sacrifices must be made. Along with minimizing time around banana peels, they maximize their time with Lakitus. Instead of spending time around people who say, you don't need to lose weight, you're too skinny as it is, they surround themselves with people who say, that's awesome, how can I help you reach your goals? PHNs use 20 seconds of courage to strike up a conversation with someone at the gym on how to do a certain exercise and make plans to train together the next day. PHNs join a running club at work or start a running club if one doesn't exist yet. If PHNs don't have people in real life cheering them on, they find an online group that pushes them to be better. You're influenced dramatically by the people around you, whether you realize it or not. You alone get to choose where your time is spent and who you prioritize. For the time being, at least until you become a PHN, you might need to sacrifice or fire your friends and family members that are pulling you down. You might need to have a serious conversation with your significant other that likes you more full-figured if your goal is to be healthier and happier. Or, diving deep into deflection strategies if you have to constantly deal with unhealthy family members you can't fire. If they are worth your time, they will change their tune to be more supportive and helpful and less of an anchor. And then start spending time around people who are stronger, healthier, happier, and more successful than you and do what they do. Are you a PHN? Phew, okay, let's see how many of these you can actually check off. One, I have a Groot mindset. Two, I know my big why. Three, I don't go on diets. I adjust my nutrition. Four, I know what my food is made of. Five, I have blueprints and blocks. Six, I don't have to exercise. I get to. Seven, I invest in my health like a 401k. Eight, I go all in on momentum. Nine, I know my kryptonite. And 10, I seek out Lakitus, not banana peels. Give yourself a score. If you mentally checked six or fewer boxes, pick one of the PHN habits and work on it for the next month. Internalize it. Make it part of your new identity and then move on to the next one. You are overcoming inertia and building momentum and never underestimate momentum. You just listened to part five of the post titled The 10 Things Perpetually Healthy Nerds Do That Unhealthy People Don't by Steve Cam of nerdfitness.com. All this week, I've been reading off these tips, things that you should do if you wanna truly change your habits and adopt a new lifestyle. But there were 10 things that were listed. And as Steve just mentioned, which I totally agree with, just pick one to start with. Just like last week, I read a bunch of different suggestions to you. Same as this week. One probably jumped out at you. One sticks out in your mind where you're like, I like that idea. Grab onto that one and try it. And Steve made another important point. Time Magazine a while back had a cover story that said, obesity is contagious. No, of course they weren't saying that obesity is caused by a virus or a bacterium. What they were saying is, you are the product of those you hang around with most. We simply give in to peer pressure all the time. We're not strong enough to resist it. And if we're hanging out with people that we really respect and love, their peer pressure is gonna have an even greater influence on our behavior. So that's what they mean by obesity being contagious. 
If you hang out with folks that constantly dine out, they're ordering big portions, you're gonna do the same. If you hang out with folks that really aren't all that active, you're probably not gonna be active either. Now, this doesn't mean you have to give up your family and your friends. It just may mean you need to take a moment and seek out those that you want to be like. And as Steve mentioned, maybe it's finding an online club or something like that where you're gonna find like-minded people and then watch how magically your behavior will start to change. Now, one last time really quickly before I go, if you wanna be on the show and be entered into the raffles and make me happy, come by oldpodcast.com to submit a health question or call 61 I love ohd If you can believe it, the next raffle is only five days away. So send in your question before then. All right, that's another week in the books. Thank you as always so much for listening. Thank you for sending in your questions. Have a wonderful weekend. I'll see you back here on Monday where your optimal life awaits. Hello, Life Optimizer. This is Justin Mollick, creator and producer of this show and Optimal Living Daily, the brother podcast of this one. Literally, I'm Dr. Neil's brother. If you like the format of this show, you'll love Optimal Living Daily too, where I also read to you from blogs, but cover other topics like personal development, finance, and minimalism from bloggers like Derek Sivers, The Minimalists, Zen Habits, and many more. So for more amazing content read to you for free, come subscribe to Optimal Living Daily too, and together we'll optimize your life. You've been listening to Optimal Health Daily. Be sure to hit the subscribe button to stay up to date on each new episode and head to oldpodcast.com. That's oldpodcast.com for a free gift as well as more actionable tips and resources to help you maximize your potential. Thanks for joining us and remember, your optimal life awaits.